What's up guys, Nick Shaw from the Baseball Box, the monthly subscription box shipped to your ball player every month or for one month loaded with baseball goodies, they'll love. Uh, so check that out. Um, here for another episode of Early Work. Today I wanna to talk about base running at second base. I'm gonna throw a few situations, base stealing, fly ball tagging or not tagging, um, and our basic uh, instruction on leads, how to take them, why we're taking them, okay? Uh, first things first, I want to talk about the type of leads, okay? And what I mean by that is a no-out lead versus a two-out lead. And we'll also talk about a one-out lead, which is very flexible. Okay, we'll start with the no-out lead. Now, no-out lead, we have to make sure we take our lead and our secondary in the baseline, okay? Think of priorities. You're going to hear this a couple times. My priority with no-outs is to get to third base, okay? If I get to third base and we only have one out, say I advance on a ground ball somewhere or I tag on a fly ball, I can score a multitude of ways if there's one out and a guy on third, okay? It puts my team in a great situation to score from there, okay? So no out lead, we're taking our lead directly off the base, in the baseline, taking our secondary right through the baseline, okay? Two out lead, our priority is to score, okay? So we're gonna cheat a little bit, we're gonna take our deeper lead. Two out lead is a deeper lead off baseline, okay? Deeper than the baseline, that way we're creating our angle already uh, to third base, making a smoother turn for my priority, which is to score on any base hit. Okay, so creating the angle early um, in our two-out lead. Now, the one thing I see a lot um, is you get deep in your two-out lead, kids get deep, they take their secondary even deeper, okay, towards the shortstop. Keep in mind, I've already created my angle, okay, so I don't want to go any deeper. In fact, I want to secondary directly at the back corner of third base okay so it's almost in and over okay with my secondary I don't want to go any deeper I didn't even want to go any further towards uh, where I was going this deep okay I kind of want to cheat in and over with my secondary and my break uh, on the hit directly towards third that way I can cut that base I already have my angle again okay so make sure if you're practicing this you get deep in your two out lead okay for me it was probably uh, about four paces maybe, one, two, three, four, okay? So nothing crazy, but I'm creating a little bit of angle here. That way I don't have to banana out and do all that as I get to third base uh, when I'm trying to score, okay? Uh, one out lead is kind of a hybrid lead. It's kind of up to the base runner in my opinion or the coach, um, however you want it. Uh, but I was actually just behind the baseline. I want to score, yes, but again, I was a base stealer. Um, so I didn't want to get too far behind the baseline. So a one out lead is very flexible Whatever's comfortable for the base runner himself or whatever the coach wants to teach from the one out lead um, It's up to them. Okay, but that's why I kept kind of close to the baseline with one out is because I was a base stealer With that being said, I'm going to explain what I mean by that when I'm stealing third base Okay, I want to steal from the baseline again the quickest way from here my lead to third base is a straight line okay in the baseline is the shortest distance there is the deeper I get the more steps I add to get to third base so if I'm gonna steal a base regardless of what kind of lead I'm in a no out one out or two out lead I need to get back to the as close to the baseline as I possibly can before I steal okay you might say oh this is a dead giveaway the infielders are gonna know they might if they have a good idea, okay? So if you're gonna steal you, or you think you're gonna steal, it might not be a good idea to get too, too deep and crash in as I'm stealing, okay? But I do need to get as close to the baseline as I can or in the baseline when I steal, okay? Giving me the shortest distance there. As plays get closer and closer, every step or half step starts to matter, okay? What I don't want you to do um, is to steal from your two out lead and steal from way back here. Okay, I've added four or five steps, if not more, by stealing from way back there instead of creating momentum and getting into the baseline. All right, now the momentum I speak of starts with the lead. Here's what I don't want, a huge lead. I don't want to max my lead out and then try to create momentum towards third as I steal, okay? Because I cannot steal third base consistently with guys that know how to hold runners and catchers that can really throw. What I don't want to do and what I can't do is steal third very well consistently from a stationary position. What I need to steal third is momentum. So if I max out my lead and I try to create momentum towards third, I am now in a very vulnerable position to get picked off 
as a middle infielder, we're gonna pick. Okay, if I see you max out your lead, then you're creating momentum, 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 chopping your feet towards third. By that time, you're way off daylight and we, you should be out every, every time, okay? So, your lead should kind of be a little small, slightly behind the base path and kind of tight to second. Now, as he's taking his sign and starting to come set, I start creeping in and over, in towards the baseline where I want to steal from, and over towards third, over towards third, over towards third. I'm moving, moving, moving. If I time him out right, and I'm still moving towards third, and I feel like I've gotten off to a good, a good distance from the base in my lead, and he lifts to go to the plate, I take off, okay? So it almost should be a walk right through this lead, and then I take off, boom, okay? now. If he does a good job and he, he sees me gaining ground away, away, away from the base, away from the base, and he's still holding, 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 and now I'm getting to the point where I think I'm probably going to get picked off, I can shut it down with a shuffle back to second and I can try to create again. Or I can just shut it down and decide not to, not to steal that pitch. All right? What we don't want to do is, again, creep, keep creeping, 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 creeping to the point where we're too far off. And what we don't want to do is stop creeping him hold me out and I get stationary, then he delivers with me still thinking I need to steal. Again, stealing flat-footed and I should be out the majority of the time over there if I'm flat-footed, okay? So just have an idea. Create momentum in and over, in towards the baseline and over towards third as I'm stealing and we take off, okay? Stealing third base, again, shorter throw from the catcher to third base, okay? So we have to have momentum and also Left-handed hitters, he's got a clear shot with no obstruction to third base. We have to do a lot of things right here, all right, including tendencies. This is probably the base where I can use it the most or where pitchers kind of fall asleep the most. What I mean by that is a lot of pitchers will come here, look to the plate, give me one look, look back home and deliver. Or there'll be a two-look guy, look to the plate, give me two looks. As soon as he looks back to the plate, he delivers. So if I have knowledge on those guys, I'm creating momentum and taking off as soon as he turns to the plate on his last look that I've determined is when he delivers, all right? I no longer have to wait on the leg kick if I know he's a pattern guy who's gonna two look every single time. Looks to the plate, looks at me, looks to the plate, looks at me. As soon as he turns to the plate, I take off. Again, stealing's about taking a chance, but it's an educated chance. We're not just running to run. If he's a two look guy and he's done it five times in a row, on the sixth time, I better be going. Okay, at the higher level, if he does it once or twice in a row, the next time I got to be going because something's coming from the out or the catcher to mix those looks. All right, so if you have knowledge or you notice something, use it as fast as you can. Okay, and this is how you use it. Last thing I want to talk about is fly balls. Okay, no outs. Again, we got to remember priority. No outs is to get to third base. I can score a ton of ways with one out if I get to third. Okay, if I'm on third with one out. So fly balls with no outs, taking my lead in the line, fly balls, I want to try to tag. If I can tag at all, I'm going to try to tag and get to third base, okay? Even if he's tracking a ball back, 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 and he's not in a full out sprint, if he's tracking it well, but losing ground that way, I'm still going to try to tag on that, okay? That way, if he catches it, I'm easy there. I'm easy. What I don't want to do is kind of be off the base with no outs thinking it's gonna drop, and then he happens to catch it. Now I have to try to sprint back. Maybe he turns and throws it to his cutoff man who's got a really good arm, who knows? But maybe it's too quick for me to get over there. So no outs, even if the guy is tracking a ball back, I'm on the base ready to tag. All right, now if it happens to be a little blooper and the guy's charging in, that's not a ball I'm gonna tag on anyways. I need to be off the base a little bit. In case it drops, now I can get to third. Okay, so I'm not saying to tag on everything, but if there's a chance based on the ball and the distance the ball is into the outfield that I can tag, I want to tag and get to third base if there's no outs. Okay, one out, it changes a little bit. Priority is no longer just to get to third, it's to get home. Okay, what I mean by that is even if I tag on a fly ball, even if I tag and get to third, now I'm on third base with two outs. Most times it takes a hit for me to get home, okay, which shrinks my chances of scoring down quite a bit. All right, now obviously if it's a routine fly ball, the guy is camped in a position where I can tag up, I'm absolutely going to try to tag, okay? As long as I have a 
realistic chance to get there without making the third out at third base, I'm gonna attack. Okay, if there's a chance I can get thrown out, I should just hold my ground here. Okay, that way I'm still here with two outs, a base hit can still score me. All right, instead of taking a chance to get to third where I still need a base hit um, or a pass ball, which I never wanna bank on, but uh, it's the same situation realistically. So I'm only tagging if there's one out, if there's an almost 100% chance of me tagging and being safe over there. All right, so a deep fly ball where a guy's tracking back, 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 instead of no outs where I'm tagging, one out, I'm off the base. Say halfway, or you can even be three quarters of the way off the base towards third base. Uh, that way when it drops, I can score. All right, what I don't want to be is really tight to the base. It happens to drop. Now I only get to third base. All right, so I'm halfway or like I said, three quarters of the way off the base. If it drops, now I score. If he happens to catch it on the run, I just retract back here and I'm on second base with two outs now. Okay, again, still needing a hit. I, what I don't want to do is bank on the ball being caught. It actually is caught with one out. Now I get to, to third base with two outs. Okay, I don't want to bank on it being caught because if I'm waiting here with one out for the guy to track and catch the ball and it happens to drop, now I only get there. Okay, um, so just know the situations um, and when tagging is or is not uh, the plan uh, that I should take. Okay, base running at second base. Uh, I'll go one final one final thing. Base running at second base. That's that's probably the most advanced thing. Uh, ball reads at first base. We pounded it every day with the Brewers. If the ball hits the dirt, boom, we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going. Okay, no matter where it bounces. At second base, things change a little bit. Again, shorter throw, so I have to be a little smarter. If the catcher drops to block and the ball bounces away from third base, okay, towards the left-handed batter's box, away, then I'm going. Happens to bounce towards third base, I'm gonna take off and then shut it down. What I don't want to do is go when he is moving directly towards his target, pick and throw. A lot of times he'll get me over there, okay? So a dirt ball read from here hits the ground off the catcher and bounces in the direction away from third base, all right? If the ball leaves the halo, okay, the dirt where the dirt meets the grass back there, if it gets into the grass, I need to be on third base no matter what direction it bounces, all right? So even if it bounces towards third, a dirt ball read and it gets out of the, the clay, whew, I'm going, all right? So first instinct needs to be go. Once you see how the ball reacts off the catcher, then I make an adjustment, all right? If it's very close and towards third base off his body, then I shut it down. Everything else is pretty much a go, all right? So there's a few things you can use with base running at second base for your team or yourself if you're a player um, or for your, your ball player if you're a parent, all right? So I hope this, this helps um, and it helps you become a better base runner and a better player uh, for your team. Thanks guys.